Hello, Jesse Good here, back from the review. And today we're reviewing a new LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens Millennium Falcon set. This is set number 75105, has 329 pieces, 6 minifigures, and it retails for $150 in the United States. Now let's take a look at the minifigures included. So here's Finn, my most anticipated part of the whole of Force Awakens line for that hairpiece alone. I knew they would make it, and they did it. This hairpiece is long overdue. Oh my gosh, but it looks fantastic. I wish it was a little bit thinner, but uh, I still love the texture on it. And maybe they wouldn't be able to make or have that texture if it was a thinner hairpiece. But it uh, still looks really darn cool. And lots of nice detail right there. And then you can just stick it back on him and you can see how well it looks on him. It looks very cool. And uh, for his face, wish his face had a smiling one because all he has is kind of a uh, kind of disgruntled face. And nice torso print as well. I love the torso. It looks really cool. It's a nice jacket. And then on the back, he has an even more kind of confused or disgruntled face right there. Next up is Ray. Uh, this is the same one as the one found in the smallest set, Ray's speeder. Love that new hair piece as well. And she has that little angry face right there. But she does have this blaster that isn't included in Ray's speeder, which is this kind of gunmetal uh, short blaster. So that actually looks really darn cool. Here's Han Solo. This version is exclusive because it's the older Han Solo to fit, to fit the Force Awakens. He also has a short blaster, but in black. Nice printing on his torso and his face where they use a different style hair than what they usually use. I thought they would go with the regular Han hair, which doesn't really fit him or I never really felt fit him. But now they just use that comb hair uh, in gray. And he has a little disgruntled face on the back. So here's Chewie, Chewbacca. Uh, from what I understand, this is the same version that they've had before. Um, except the best part, which is this totally new mold, is this little bowcaster right here. I mean, wow, what an awesome new mold. And it's actually a flick and fire, or not really flick one, but a, a stud shooting bowcaster where you just kind of push down on this and it'll shoot the studs out like that. So that's actually really darn cool and it's molding. And uh, of course, this piece just kind of goes over the torso like that. Never had a Chewbacca minifigure, actually. I had a keychain, but never a minifigure. So this is my first. For the little droid they included, it's BB 8. This one's really popular with the kids, even though the movie hasn't came out. Uh, and I like how this is built, but it could have been better. I mean, a lot of the other toys have it as a rolling little thing. And honestly, it would have been a lot more money or cost costly to make it kind of this rolling kind of a thing. So what they did was they just kind of printed it in the middle right there where it looks like it's it's supposed to be rolling or whatever like that. What's really interesting is these are two different molds. I didn't know this until I actually started building this where you got this bottom mold right here and then you got this top head mold. So that's quite interesting. This is one of the smallest molds I've seen in a while. So that's it for BB-8. So here's what seems to be a villain, a Kaji Club gang member. He doesn't have a specific name, but I'm sure maybe in the movie he'll have a name. But for being one who doesn't have a specific name, very well done minifigure. I love how this came out. Nice detailing on the torso and legs, which are exclusive. He has this older style gun, which is quite interesting. I don't know how that's a blaster. We'll have to see the context in the movie. And then for his face, he has this nice printing that has this little eye patch that carries on from using this piece right here, which is a skater hat, as I call it. And it's in black, which we haven't gotten it in black before. No back face printing, but still a very nice minifigure overall. And for the other baddie, you got Tasu Leech, specifically named, I guess he's part of the gang as well. Also has another, uh, a different gun piece, but you know, that is an older gun um, that he's using as a blaster. So that's quite interesting as well. Nice kind of torso and leg print. I really like how that came out. And his hair is that hair uh, that we've had before in black, but it still looks pretty nice. And he has two different face prints. So you have one on the back and one on the front. So really interesting minifigure overall. So here is the Millennium Falcon itself, very similar to the 2011 build, and it doesn't really have, you know, this, this correct scale, I guess you could say, that you would expect from the movie, but, you know, that's obvious because with all these LEGO Star Wars sets, especially the wide release ones, they're not really to scale, but uh, you get a lot of features and you get the overall design that looks a lot like the actual vehicle, and the scale isn't completely off, I mean, it's not like as accurate, I guess, as the UCS version, but it's still a very accurate you know, representation of the vehicle itself. And it has lots of nice play features for the kids who are going to buy it and the adults are going to love it for the collectability of it and all the features that they include that reference the movies and stuff like that. So we'll take a look at really the front and then we'll, we'll start at the front and we'll start out looking at the outside and then we'll take a look at the inside, which is my favorite part. So looking at the cockpit area, they actually use the same prints on the cockpit pieces. There's a little dish right here and then there's this kind of half right here as the 2011 version. I like this right here, you know, I like how it looks from the outside. Don't like the inside because, you know, it doesn't really fit as much characters as you'd expect. It really just fits two minifigures, so you'll have to put like a, 
on right here. Or I know on the actual uh, instructions and everything like that, they actually show Finn and Ray driving it. So maybe they're driving it this movie. I don't know. We'll have to see how that turns out in the movie. But really, that's all it fits. It only really fits two characters. And, you know, that's that's really how it's been with these uh, minifigure scale ones. And uh, you just kind of put the cockpit back on. And honestly, the cockpit, putting it back on, it's really a pain to get it to snap right in. Because, like, this looks okay. But if you look on this side right here, this one in the corner right here doesn't snap in fully. So that kind of just annoys me. But uh, even when it's on like this, it doesn't look that bad. So I'm probably just going to leave it on like this so I can easily remove it and whatever. So that's it for the cockpit area. Then moving at the front part, you have just these two little missiles right here, which are hidden. You can't really see it. And how you activate those is you kind of just push down on this, and it'll shoot out like that. And it shot so fast, I don't even know if you guys saw it on the camera, but we'll give it one more go. And see how fast that went? So I actually like how it's a concealed missile, because usually with these little missiles that they include, you know, these versions where you push on them, they're always on, like, the side, and if you accidentally touch it, it'll just fly out. But this one you can't really accidentally touch, because it's kind of covered, the little trigger part is covered by these plates right here, so I think it works out very, very well. And I like how that came out right there. And of course, you could just kind of slide it back in if you'd like, and it fits back in like that. So right here, there's a little radar dish with a sticker on it. That's a pretty neat uh, build, and it just kind of can be rotated around. And it's actually on a mini ball joint right there, so you can move it up and down and stuff like that. So that's all cool. There's a sticker right there, two stickers there. And you can see how the side areas are kind of built. They use a lot of clips and snot or studs on top techniques. And then right here, they even have one of those uh, translucent uh, light blue tubes. And these are the little heat exhaust vents, which are also stickered pieces. And just carrying all around here. And then we got an, a few stickered pieces. There's actually four right here on this part. Um, but, of course, this is the gunner area where they have both the gunner. They have the little guns on the top, and then they have the little uh, guns on the bottom for this right here. And that has a whole little play feature once that you can fit minifigures in there. Once we open it, we'll take a look at that. But you can see there's a sticker right there and kind of a half sticker right here. So, now let's get into the cool part, or my favorite part, which is opening up everything. So... You could just kind of open up this part right here, and then you open up this, 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 and all these little panels. It opens up quite well, and I like how they kind of did this because it allows for easy access, but on the outside, it kind of, uh, I like how they made it so that, it, you know, not all of it's covered, but from looking from the outside, it looks kind of like how the outside of the Millennium Falcons kind of looked, even though it has those little gaps, which obviously the real ship doesn't have, but uh, the gaps or kind of, it, it looks like it, it, they kind of nailed that design of it, and I really like that. So now we'll take a look at the inside, which has a whole bunch of little play features. It all opened, and we'll start looking at the details um, from this little area right here near the cockpit. So right here, there's not any details or anything like that inside the actual uh, Millennium Falcon, but you start getting into the cool little playability features and everything like that with this little part right here with the landing ramp where, you know, um, this is how they kind of exit the vehicle. So you would push it up like this and it stays in there quite well, but once you push down, you hear a little bit of a snap and that's kind of how you'll get your minifigures to exit. Yeah, when you have the landing gear on the bottom, it doesn't really create much room to actually walk out the minifigures from that little ramp right there. Uh, so you're going to have to kind of lift up the vehicle or remove the landing gear to make it so you, you can actually walk out minifigures from here. And I got a little pirate right here, but let's get to... Chewbacca. So if you want to walk out the minifigures, you're going to have to lift it up too, so that the landing gear isn't really touching the bottom of your table or whatever. Uh, but it works quite fine. And then, of course, you can just push it back up like that once you're done playing around with that. Then there's some little details with uh, just the inner structure right here. You got a tube, um, which is the same piece they use on the outside with that uh, transparent blue one. And right here, you actually have the little hyperdrive unit. And uh, I like how they use these stickers right here because the stickers don't look bad at all and I like how they use this nice little uh, tiled uh, round piece that's kind of a purplish color which looks great and you can kind of twist these around if you'd like and play around with that um, but it comes together as one cool looking unit right there on the back and uh, moving from there we have this little area right here which looks like a little resting bay because you got what seems to be two beds 
And so if you want, you could kind of rest Chewbacca or make Chewbacca sleep right on here. And I do like that they do leave enough room, even with all these little details and all these little rugged kind of displays back here, um, to fit minifigure standing up. So that's really a good thing for people who want to play around with it and put little displays inside here because you have more than enough room to display all the minifigures, even the little bad guys. So we'll just kind of fit them around right here. BB-8. And... Uh, on this side right here, you can see that was where the little outside of, we, this is I think the area yeah, where all the little uh, heat exhaust vents were at. And right here is one of my favorite parts of this uh, whole build. So right here what you got is the Digeric, I believe it's pronounced, uh, the little board game that they play along. It's it's Chewie and the droids who play it. Of course they don't include R2 or C3PO here, but uh, it is actually this little shield piece, the rounded shield piece printed, and it looks excellent. They've never done this piece of printed or this specific print on this piece before and I think it's the most accurate they've done of this little board game right here so that's really neat and they even got some full-size chairs this time around instead of just the regular Lego minifigure chairs which I know they use for the 2011 version and uh, they even have these little sticker details on them that make them look pretty darn cool uh, so you can see they use some 2 by 4 tiles and they're kind of like reclining chairs so you can kind of move them up and uh, they're on these little hinges which looks nice right there, and then they even have these two little stickers right on these two tiles back there. So it looks really clever all around, and then they even have a printed piece right there. Just taking a look from another angle, you can see that was that little sticker that we saw from the outside, even when it's closed, that's on the wall right there, and that's a little board game area. And then right here, you got this nice little control panel area, uh, which that's one sticker right there. Uh, but what you have is actually this little seat right here, which can also recline, uh, so you can put on to kind of, I guess, control that area while Ray and Finn control a ship. And uh, that works out pretty well. And it makes for a really nice seat that you could have your minifigures lying back down or whatever on. So that's it really for all these insides all around. Uh, there's some other details here and there. Like, for example, there's that little storage area, which if you lift up this part right here, you could actually fit maybe the guns or the weapons and everything like that, the little blasters, or you could fit one whole minifigure in there. So if you just want to kind of slide a minifigure in there, you got to kind of have them lying down. But uh, you see like that. And there you go. <laughs> He's Hans just kind of hiding in there. And they've had that with some other uh, past versions of this. And the last part I want to take a look at inside is this little gunner feature. Uh, also, this part rotates. I forgot to say that. But uh, looking at this part, it's in the middle. And uh, they've done this before, and you can see that was that little stickered part in the middle from the outside. And what you do is you kind of lift this hatch up, and you slide up this little platform right here by kind of pulling it up like that. Then what you have are seats for two minifigures. So once you have your two minifigures loaded on like that, you just slide them back in. Then you could play around with the idea of them kind of controlling these little blasters out here uh, on the top. And then on the bottom, they actually have a nearly identical build for those, which you can see right there. And those also rotate, just like the ones on the top. And speaking of the bottom, let's just take a look at the bottom. And you can see, I actually wasn't expecting it to look as good as it does, but it looks really good from the bottom. And uh, that's that little gun part right here. And that rotates, of course. And also that's that little... Uh, the little uh, landing part or the part where it's kind of a ramp and that's the little part where that you could hide a minifigure and then there's these four little parts of landing gear to make it kind of stand up which it stands up really well and it is really sturdy overall so that's it for the bottom and now I'm just going to look at little features here and there that I might have missed so one thing that I really like is that uh, they have a lot of these little crates that you could put uh, or they have one crate right here but they have also the little uh, storage area where you could put all those extra weapons you get with uh, the minifigures and uh, you could just kind of stick them there and then they also have some clips like uh, one right here and then one right here for this little wrench uh, that they hold so that is it for the build of the Millennium Falcon this is pretty long but uh, we'll go on to the box and the final verdict. The box is absolutely massive and the back shows all the little play features. So here's the instruction booklet. I'm glad it's not a stapled version and they have ads that I've shown before on different various videos. So overall, honestly, I think this set's a great value. Yeah, it's pricey as in it's, it's a higher range set in terms of the price compared to the other sets. 
But I think that this this feels like the, the actual Millennium Falcon feels like it's just a great deal in terms of its build and how well it's made and how big it came out. Also, you get a wide range of exclusive minifigures like Finn, who's the main star of the whole Force Awakens, who's only in this set, which is weird, uh, but he's a really awesome minifigure. Han Solo, which this is a new version, and Chewbacca's new bowcaster, and then two exclusive villains. And then you get BB-8 and Rey, who do come in other sets in this exact same version, but it's still very nice to get those two since they seem to be main characters. So this one is an imp imp improvement from the last one because of the interior, because the interior is much more detailed this time around, in my opinion. So I'll rate this set an A. I think it's a great value for $150 because of the sheer size of the vehicle and who's included. So that's it for this review, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.